Welcome back to the big board. It's quiet here. I've only got one child, uh, actually man, in the house with me, and he uh, leaves for snowboarding tomorrow. And then we'll have uh, a full 10 days to ourselves to uh, do a little bit of travel for work, play a few games, and get after it. It's going to be fun. But before we get to all that, welcome back to the big board. And let's have a look at uh, Tango Down. A pretty straightforward, simple game from Tiny Battle Publishing. The best way for me to explain this in one sentence would be it is the PC game SWAT represented as a board game. And... <clears throat> By that, I mean it's interesting, fun, fast, pretty tense. It could use uh, some more things in it uh, to make it awesome. But right now, it is a fun, fast, tactical man-on-man uh, -man game, which there are very few of. And I think it's got lots and lots of potential. So with that in mind, let's have a look at this and have a quick conversation about the game. Very straightforward exercise to work out what's, what goes on and what needs to happen. A straightforward sequence of play. Uh, whoever has initiative will first draw a card and then uh, conduct an action. And each unit can conduct two actions in a turn. And they're, uh, they're able to you know, move fire, uh, execute actions that may be uh, listed in here, and there are several other bits and pieces they can do. Uh, there's opportunity fire and pop-out shots and uh, reaction moves and all sorts of things. So it becomes a very interactive game very quickly. Both players are engaged the almost the entire time, and there's a fair amount of uh, choices that need to be made. Uh, for different things. You've got these numbers uh, here, uh, skill, movement rate, and your toughness here. And uh, what's going to happen here is you use your skill when you're firing. And see, you can probably see if I put this up here. I'm putting on his unwounded side. Uh, he's got a, a skill rating of two, a, a movement of four, <clears throat> and a toughness of one. You know, he's got some body armor or whatever the case may be. And most of the guys have got, here's a dude with a, a toughness of two, skill of three, movement of four. And when he's wounded, those ratings drop down. I like the top-down art. It gives it a good, good effect. So shooting is really quite straightforward. You'll count the range. and Everything is range-based. So uh, the number of obstacles or the difficulty of the shots or occluding terrain or uh, obstructing terrain is all represented as uh, additional hexes that you roll against with a 2d6 die roll. So one, two, three, four into here. You're shooting through a doorway that would add one to the range and you're going to subtract two for your skill. So I said uh, one, one, two, three, four, five for the doorway. If it was in here, let's say, then it'd be six, seven for the, uh, the obstructing terrain in there, the rubble. Uh, and then we'd get subtract two and he'd have a five. That would allow us, if I rolled 2d6 to hit, if I rolled greater than that number, it's a hit. And then we would work out what the damage would be. And that's where your toughness factor comes in. Now, other things that impact uh, range as well is how many actions have you already done in a turn? How many um, are you taking opportunity fire? Are you doing a pop-out shot? Which is literally you go one, shoot, and then pop back. Uh, those types of things as well. So there's all sorts of little bits and pieces that go in to give this a man-on-man -man tactical feel versus a squad level gameplay so you hit uh, once you hit you then work out what's the difference between uh, the the range and the die the die roll you made and so let's say uh, the range was 10 and you rolled box cars and you rolled 12 and the difference would be two and with that two we compare that to the toughness of this guy and if it's equal to or less than this number, we would just take 
another action, we would put another action on this guy and he would have two actions. It would kind of mean he, he wasn't wounded, but he, he was just pinned down. He took cover from the incoming fire. But if I roll higher than this number, if the difference is higher than this number, then he takes a wound and we're gonna flip him over. And that's it. <laughs> that's all there is to it. Now, uh, the, the things that, uh, as I said, the things that make it interesting are the fact you've got grenades, uh, you've got breaching charges, you can add doors into the gameplay, time bombs, there are hostages, hostage scenarios, there are 10 scenarios in the game. The sleeper, you know, bad guys in amongst the hostages, the briefcase uh, capture, uh, breaching, and you know, there's the breaching charge there. And you get flanking fire. Uh, let's see what else is in here that is interesting. I've mentioned the pop up, not pop out, pop up shots, opportunity fire, reaction movement. You can just do suppression fire, so spray and pray stuff. Uh, there are stun grenades, all sorts of nifty little things of that nature. And that's what makes it a really, uh, there's a, a assault shields. That's what makes it a really fascinating, fun game. Here you've got a little points chart. And I obviously can't verify how good or bad this is or how accurate this is when it comes to building balanced scenarios. But uh, you've got the ability here to build your own scenarios, build your own maps, go get a, a map of a building, you know, go get Nakatomi Plaza or whatever, and uh, put one inch squares down on this, uh, on the map, and you can uh, recreate your own yippee Kaye experience. The counters are a nice thickness. They are well cut and they are well uh, drawn, etc. Everything's very straightforward once you know what's going on. There are, so let's talk about the, some of the, so that's, that's the game in essence. There's another map on the other side of this. And uh, there are these cards, the, card, the cards, I think we should talk about the card play. You're, as I said earlier on, you're drawing a card each time it's your activation. And when you get two end turn cards drawn, that's the end of the game uh, turn for you. And what happens next, which I forgot to do on two out of the five turns that I've played here, is anyone who doesn't have an action on him and is not in a line of sight of the enemy can move one hex. So for instance here, if this guy was here, I could move one and these two guys could move, and this guy could indeed move. Stacking's only two though. So that, would, that gives you the ability, to, otherwise it becomes a very static game if you didn't have that capability, but that's the last thing you do. And then uh, after that, uh, sorry, the, the second last thing you do, then after that you pull all these off, reshuffle the deck, and away you go, and uh, you're, you're back at it playing. Now, for the next turn. Now, what, what I, things that I thought would be interesting would be some more cards and I think you've got to then work out how many end, extra end turns do you need but it just feels like you're getting the same stuff over and over again because uh, there are only 18 cards in the deck but they're they're there and they they do they do the job and it, and it works out pretty well it is kind of funky though when all of a sudden you are uh, you, you pull two end turns right after right after each other and that's the whole turn just gone just like that it kind of it's a little bit frustrating kind of like uh, you know when you're playing world at war or whatever and you get that uh, double double chip pull for end turn so there's that now the artwork on the map is very dark and it is very hard to see these thin red lines and and what are indeed are they thin red lines on the map and it seems that the colors are overly muted for the maybe that's thematic or whatever but it just makes it hard to see what's what and it's important for i'm just flipping over here so i can read it to you so you can understand what's an interior wall what's an obstructed square what's an exterior wall and what's a doorway uh, you really want to be able to see these lines a little more clearly i think uh you know, we can see some poppy color here that's nice uh, but everything's very muted and i think it's perhaps trying to represent the you know combat in the dark type of thing and i'm assuming here we're playing 
uh, it's all uh, taking place in daylight. I don't know if there are any scenarios that got run at night. I don't have, I have not read through every single scenario here yet. So there's that, the, I think the artwork can kind of sort of be lifted up a couple of shades so things are more readily discernible, particularly when you're first starting to play, you're trying to work things out. Uh, see, here's a, actually, here's a good example of, there's the actual, there's the red line, right? Uh, and we can't, uh, we can't really see them very clearly in here and discern the differences. You know? The other thing is that there are some formatting errors it just it looks like the printing went awry. See how there's a double, this double print here. Doesn't affect the the, the, re, the readability at all, but it's just a shame that as you're going to set up your very first scenario, you've got this kind of messy, messy stuff going on in the rules. I did find a couple of uh, things that I could not find the answers to in the rules. Uh, question about pivoting, whether or not uh, it was going to cost me a movement point or not to, to change facing. I didn't see that in the rules. Made my own house rule there on the fly. Uh, there are, because of the interactive nature of the game, I wasn't sure whether you could uh, do certain things with pop-up shots and opportunity fire and reaction moves. Uh, the, all the rules are there. You just had to kind of dig it out. And keep in mind, this is only 24 pages, uh, 25 pages, including the introduction and all the charts and diagrams and all the scenarios. So it's a nice, light, easy read. Once you work out what how combat works, it runs very quickly and very smoothly. And like I said, this is basically that uh, PC game called SWAT or whatever it's called. Uh, I think it's SWAT. This is what it reminds me of, and it's great fun. So I uh, hope... Hope you all enjoyed that quick little overview. Tango Down from uh, Tiny Battle Publishing and it's uh, designed by Greg Porter, which I believe is uh, an associate or a friend of Mark's. Man-to-man uh, -man combat in the urban environment. Hope you enjoyed it. Ciao.